guys, welcome back from Tampa Bay. Today I've got a review of the 2016 BMW K1600 GT Sport. There are two versions of this, the Sport and the regular. Primary difference between the two seems to be the windscreen. The Sport has this little short cutoff guy and the regular is more of a taller design. First impressions. Now, first of all, this has a ton of electronics which I'll be going through at least most of them. Just looking everything over here. First off, this has, you might notice, no key showing. That's because it's a keyless system. And I've actually got it in a little locking compartment down here, waterproof. And it's pretty much like any uh, keyless car these days. If it's in proximity, you can just use this push button to turn your bike on and off. Also has what's called central locking which is really cool and I could have used on my last trip up to the Blue Ridge. It's this little button here and it locks all the compartments, the gas tank, your saddlebags, everything electrically, just like the push button on your car remote. So you don't have to use the key, you don't have to pull it in and off. And I was in and out of my trunk 50 times on that trip. The key was in and out of it every time, so it was annoying. This, this would be really cool for touring trips. Of course, it's ride by wire. We've got all kinds of different throttle, and suspension modes. We've got a menu button here and a scroll wheel that's kind of like the up and down on other bikes. I'm going to go through the menu here. We've got handlebar control or handlebar heaters, seat heaters, not going to use those. Whole menu for the audio system, which I'm not going to go into. And I'm not going to detail every single little Thing. You can look up the manufacturer's specs for all that, but I'm going to go through the major stuff. Very nice looking high-res display, very visible, excellent contrast, way better than pretty much any other bike I've ridden as far as the display goes. Looks like a high-end radio display. Big gear indicator that lights up green for end in the left there, goes to white when you're in a gear. We've got a voltometer, oil level, toy, uh, tire pressure monitor, trip meters, all that kind of stuff. Over here is a mode button. This is where you can cycle through the different throttle modes. Dynamic is pretty much straight. It's regular. It's one-to-one. -one. It's just, you know, like a cable. And we're going to go. And I'm going to leave it dynamic for now. All right, first impressions. Light clutch. The engagement zone on it is very short and quick. Making sure I'm recording here. Yep. <laughs> Very torquey motor. Right now it feels actually a lot like the Honda Goldwing and FSB. Just the way it scoots almost feels like a big electric motor, especially in lower RPMs here. We'll get it up higher, see how it responds there. I'm getting a ton of wind buffeting with this almost non-existent windscreen, but of course that's the way it's designed. We have a separate button for it here. I do like that. I wish the FGR had that again. The previous previous generation had its own button for it. Uh, it's about the same speed as the Kawasaki Concourse. Not quite as fast as the FGR, but not slow. And it really doesn't make any difference to the noise of the wind buffeting, but it took the wind off of my chest and put it up to the top of my helmet. That's really about the only difference. I'm going to leave it down here just because it's no quieter, but a lot better breeze, <laughs> which I appreciate. Uh, just trying to zip up my jacket here real quick. There we go. As you can see, very, very stable. I am gliding down the road. And I also noticed that just like the Honda, the top of my left foot is contacting the engine case when I try to put it on top of the shifter, there's hardly any clearance. It's not quite as bad as the Honda, but I do not have clearance on top of the shifter peg. Maybe it's adjustable. The FJR's is, so it wouldn't surprise me if this is also. Right now it's in a very good neutral position as far as its height, so I have no problem with that whatsoever. My foot lands on it without thinking about it. And I tested the signals back there. They are non-canceling, standard left right push in to cancel riding position is very neutral and comfortable i am completely upright i have no lean forward whatsoever 
We're up at 4,000 RPM here in third gear and it is quite snappy. I'm sure once traffic clears a little bit here, I don't know exactly where we're going, but we're going right to the twisty roads that I like to do around me here. I'm, I'm only five minutes from home. Yay, going down racetrack. Excellent torque. It has almost no vibration, just a little bit through the handlebars here, but very butter smooth and a lot more snappy response once you get it above 3000. Surprisingly, very quiet engine until you open up the throttle past about a quarter and get the RPMs up a little bit. Just cruising, you can't hear a thing. You can't hear the engine, you can't hear the exhaust. But when you do, it's a quite beautiful sound. It's quiet, it's very quiet, but it's got a really nice race car note to it. Think Italian race car harmony remote. That's not remote, exhaust. <laughs> That's the sound I'm getting out of it. I actually like being in the upper rev range here. Feels like it could just rev for days. Let's see how first feels. Oh, that's a beautiful sound, 6,000 RPM. That sounds gorgeous, but you, you just have to get the RPMs up there to hear it. Let's go back into top gear, kind of cruise it along here. You're gliding down the road. It feels like a Cadillac. This has what's called the telelever suspension. What that really means to you is you don't have, I can't do it right now because I'll freak out the guys behind me, but you can't do a big braking maneuver and have it nosedive. It, it keeps its posture. The biggest difference is it dives a little bit, not a lot, but then it just kind of comes back up after you stop, almost like an air suspension. It's gentle. There's no rebound springiness. That's the biggest difference I notice. The other difference is when you get on the throttle, the front end rises and actually a little bit more than I'm used to on some other bikes. It's not anything major. It's just a little difference that if you know about it, you're going to realize it's there. I don't know how much that's contributing to the comfortable ride or how much it's the suspension itself. Now I'm in the middle of the road suspension settings. I'm, I've got it set on one rider and normal. Sport stiffens up the suspension. We don't really have roads that could take advantage of that around here. I mean, this is as twisty as it gets. And then we have comfort, which is great for freeway cruising just to counteract the the thunk, the thunk, the thunk, takes all that out of it. FGR has got all that too, I'm used to that. But normal's right in the middle of the road. I have to say this seat is heavenly. It is beautiful. It is on the wide side. I can barely flat foot this bike. I'm six foot two, 32 inch inseam, 240 pounds. It is a tall bike. It is a top heavy bike, but I'm very used to it. The FJR is all of those things as well. So it's nothing unusual to me. However, that is gonna freak out a lot of people. The other thing is when I do stand up or come to a stop, the foot pegs are a little more forward than other bikes and they're right at your ankles. So you have to put your legs a little farther apart. You can't put them straight down because they're right in the pegs. So that again, just eats up a little bit of the height. I can barely flat foot it. When I'm standing up over this bike, I have nothing under my butt, okay? It's right on me. So it's even about an inch taller than the FJR, which is already a very tall bike for a lot of people. This is about the same height as a Super Tenere, to put it into perspective, some of you might, or a Versys. Two very tall bikes again. But this has a much wider seat when you're standing up. Now, going down the road, this seat does not feel wide. It's tapered and it's narrow at the front. There are little pockets in the tank here and my legs are fitting absolutely perfectly into them. Feels exactly like the FJR in that regard. There's a weird vibration in the rear brake pedal. I'm sure it's normal, but it just feels like a uh, system pulsing. Not like an ABS or anything, but I can feel it. Let's get on it here. Well, the front end wants to come up. 
that was full throttle up to, I don't know, what was it, 6,000 RPM. <laughs> I have no doubt this would wheelie without a problem if you turn off traction control. Acceleration felt on par with any other very powerful big bike I've ridden. Same as the Concours, FJR, I mean, nothing notably different. More than enough power for absolutely anything you want to do on it, that is for sure. Up in the top gear here, we are at, where's my speedometer? I want to see, oh, oh, well, I got the big analog one, but I'm used to seeing the digital too. 60 miles an hour, 2700 RPM. So an all day freeway cruiser without any problem there. Nice big overdrive. You can't even really tell it's running at this RPM. There's no vibration anywhere. The only movement I feel is from the wind buffeting my chest. The mirror position is, now you would look at these and say, wow, they're really wide mirrors. And they are, they are they're nice and forward. They're out and it's a big cowling to begin with. But you know what? A third of them is eaten up by my elbows. I can barely see behind me. I can just see the guy behind me in both mirrors. So it's not like they're aimed inwards or anything like that. They're aimed completely naturally. But I still have average sight. It's not bad. It's on par with the vast majority of other motorcycle mirrors out there. But I've seen better. I'm not faulting it. The other thing is they're vibrating a lot. I can wiggle these whole housings. I am going to bet that is more a setup issue than the bike. Some of you that have these, let me know if that's normal or not. I, I'm not going to fault the bike for that because I really do think they might be a little bit loose. Maybe they've been folding these a lot for rides or uh, they feel like they're on springs, but they just move up and down and they're the whole sight picture. You're probably not going to see it in the GoPro, but in real life, everything is just kind of bouncing around a little bit. They're not steady. Let me put it that way. Very good ground clearance. Not even close to scraping the pegs there. That's a big difference between this and the F6B. Even though the seating position, the feel of the bike at low speeds, and that peg really remind me of it. <laughs> No, there's no comparison to the way it actually rides and turns. You can't do that in the F6B. The thing scrapes it five degrees below what I just did there. Butter smooth, tons of torque. We're at 2,000 RPM in top gear. I'm gonna give it full throttle. No complaints from the engine. It just goes like a big electric motor. The clutch is on the light side. I really like it. It's not quite as light as the Super Tenere or, geez, what was the other one I just did that had a super light clutch? Uh, it was the, the Versys, two adventure bikes that are really geared towards having to use the clutch a lot. Those had an almost effortless, I mean, you could pull those with your little fingers, light clutch. This is not that light, but it is a lot lighter than most other bikes that I've ridden and reviewed. I definitely like it. It's a lot lighter than the Concourse or the FJR for sure. Although the new FJR is supposed to be a lot lighter, so it may be on par with this. I haven't ridden it yet. There are no ESs available yet to review. They didn't even have them in the demo fleet yet at Daytona. So I will get on that as soon as they're available. Going through the gauges, I'm just going to go through some of the features here. Like I said, you can go through. There we go, full throttle. The rev limiter cuts in very softly. Just kind of gently brings you off power. It's not a harsh cutoff. Top end doesn't keep pulling. It definitely has more power in the mid-range than anything. It's, it's pretty flat though. It's not a big difference. It's not like it tapered off like a big V-twin 
typical cruiser, but it did not have the sport bike like top end where it just kept pulling faster and faster until you shifted. It did have a little bit of a taper off. Then again, you're not running this bike like a sport bike. It's a sport touring bike. You know, it's a great engine in a big platform for comfy cruising for two that can handle anything you throw at it. But it's not gonna be on a racetrack. So, totally expected. Plus, it's a V, not a V6, it's, it's an inline six. So it's a big engine to be revving up. And the fact that it's got an eight and a half thousand RPM red line for a six, well, that's pretty darn good, especially for a 1600 cc. Those are big pistons, even though it's a six. But just realize it's not like, for example, the BMW XR, the SR1000. I mean, that engine pulls like a freight train faster and faster the higher you go until you hit red line. There is no taper off. <laughs> not like that. But it's also not like the cruiser where you get halfway up in the rev range and you might as well shift. I hate that. It's just like, what's the point? A lot of Harleys are like that. They've got great bottom end torque, but you're shifting at 3,000, 4,000 RPM because, well, you've just gone past the sweet spot. Well, you might as well make the red line at that RPM then. I mean, there's no point in going higher. But this overall is a very flat engine. It, it really doesn't care what gear it's in. Obviously, you do get faster revving as you shift down into a better range, but it, it wasn't day and night. For example, I could be in third or second here, 3,500 versus 4,500, and it's still gonna go. I would bet just as good in one as the other if I wanted to pass this guy, which I do, but I'm not going to. <laughs> he might. Nope. Too many curves. Ugh. Of course we get the Sunday driver, but it's Saturday! Come on! Got a cruise control here, just like a car. We've got an on-off switch. I'm looking for an on. There is no on indicator. It's just a switch. And then a resume set here. And brake, clutch, or movement of the throttle will cancel it, as expected. This jog wheel here is kind of like the up and down on other bikes to cycle through the menu. There's no select button. You just leave it where it's lying and go to the next menu item or leave it alone and it selects what you have. Going through the menu here. I like the voltometer. That's kind of cool. More gauges are better. I love the oil level. I love two very cool things about this. Not only does it have a tire pressure gauge, but the tire nipples are pointed to the side in the wheels. That is just an awesome feature. A lot of guys have to buy little adapters, little you know L adapters to put on there because it's virtually impossible to get some gauges or fill tubes on motorcycle tires. You know it's, it just doesn't fit. But these have them pointed to the side. That is fantastic. I'm gonna go into. Uh, rain mode here. This is dumbing it down. Less horsepower, more aggressive throttle, or uh, more aggressive traction control, less aggressive throttle. There's a bit of a delay. It's not quite as obvious a change as, for example, the FJR going into touring mode. That's a real soft throttle. I'm going to give it full throttle here in rain. Not a big difference. Still a ton of power. All you have is just a softer electronic roll-on. That's really about it. Road mode is in between the two. Now the salesman said it gives you a little bit less horsepower. I don't know about that, but it does change your traction control and your ABS aggressiveness. I'm going to put it back in dynamic just because I like full, you know, just give me everything it's got. Let me do the attenuation of the throttle, just like a throttle, like uh, just like a cable. So that's what I like. 
drop it down here. I do like this thing in the upper RPMs a lot better. Pretty much just because I can hear the engine. It's a beautiful sound. I'm going to open up my helmet here, put the screen up as much as I can, and let you guys try to hear the engine. That's a beautiful sound, my friends. That is a great sound. I would be just revving the crap out of this thing <laughs> just to hear the engine. Very flickable. Once this is moving, it does not at all seem as big as it is. This is a top-heavy big bike. Make no bones about it. When it's standing still, when you're moving around a parking lot, it feels just like any other big top-heavy bike. But it does hide its weight and it's balanced very well when it's moving. Now again, I don't know how much is due to that telelever suspension or how much is just due to the relatively low center of gravity because of the engine design. Probably both. But it's very flickable when you're moving. Hardly any input needed and rock solid and stable. The rider triangle is great. I'm very upright. I have no lean forward. These bars are pretty well pulled back from the factory. These grips are about, I don't know, five, six inches back from the main steering bearings. So you do have a completely upright seating position. Now sitting here, I'm just barely flat footing it. I can smell the engine and the exhaust. It smells good, but this thing's cooking. I do not feel any heat. This also has some manually openable vents here. They kind of direct a little bit of cooling air into my chest and my arms. It's pretty much hitting me in the center of my chest. It's moving columns of air right here. And it is very noticeable. I like that a lot. I would really like those on the FJR, especially now that I have the bigger windscreen and it took that away from me versus a stock. This is really nice. I would have these open all the time here in Florida. Big plus there for sure. Brakes feel great. I mean, they're not sport bike stop you right now. Obviously, it's a very heavy bike. I wouldn't expect that. But they feel very solid. I've got good feedback. And like I said, that weird little vibration it's not like a mechanical vibration it's almost electric through the rear brake pedal when I just want to come to a stop and it's not an ABS pulsing I'm not activating the ABS or aggressively stopping or anything like that I'm just not sure what it is I'm sure it's by design maybe it's just letting you know you're stopping I don't know I do love the clutch this seat is heavenly it is comfy it's got a lot of spring. It's got a lot of foam and cushion. It's got vertical travel. I'm just kind of bouncing in it a little bit, but it also holds you in place. It has a lot of forward and back movement space. It's got a nice lip on the back and it's got room in the front. You're not sliding into the tank at all. Very impressed. So there you go. There has been your 2016 BMW K1600 GT Sport. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. And we'll see you next time.